there and welcome back for our last lesson of A Push Period 5. We're going to be doing the overall Period 5 review covering the period of 1844 to 1877. I'm your A Push Lady Boss. Thanks for joining me. As always, click down in the description if you want some notes to follow along as you go through this lesson. So we're going to go through how this, uh, how important this period is to the overall curriculum in APUS history. We're going to spend the most time covering the topics and key concepts. Um, briefly go over the skill of comparison. I'm going to show you the most important terms to know, and then briefly uh, demonstrate the themes and objectives for the unit. So this is one of the main units for APUS history. Periods three through eight are all all going to be weighted the same. You're going to see them on the AP exam be approximately 10 to 17 percent of your um, overall exam. You will definitely see it in the multiple choice, very likely as an SAQ, as it could be included in questions one, two, and three. And it could be on the DBQ, as the DBQ can cover any material from units three through eight. And then the LAQ, you have three options. And the second option, which is technically question three, because the DBQ is question one, uh, it could be covered in the LAQ question um, three. So there are 12 topics for this unit, um, but the first and last are going to be all about uh, a specific skill. And so there um, really is 10 lessons that you need to be really familiar with. So first key concept, the United States became more connected with the world, pursued an expansionist foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere, and emerged as a destination for many migrants from other countries. So we're really looking at... Um, uh, growth and expansion here, especially with territory. So thinking about what's happening before period five, there's a lot of population growth and expansion West that is already occurring before we get to 1845. There's already debates over the rights of groups of people that live in these areas. And we are already seeing kind of a rise of immigration beginning that will continue um, to increase throughout period five. Economically, we're going to see in, um, in the years before 1844 a massive growth in dependence upon slavery as cotton becomes more significant. We see the U.S. becoming more connected with the world, more trade and interactions in foreign affairs. There is continued competition for land and resources as the U.S. has continued to migrate to the West. Um, during the Civil War, there will be economic growth, especially in the North. And then there's going to be some pretty major efforts to rebuild the economy after the Civil War, especially in the South. Politically, we see the growth of an expansionist foreign policy. While the U.S. has always migrated west and taken on more land, it becomes an even more significant part of actual federal policy. There is increased division and changes to political parties, especially as we um, get closer to the Civil War. Those regional differences are going to become super apparent in the Civil War and Reconstruction period, and we're going to see increased conflicts with Mexicans and American Indians early in the period um, as the U.S. engages in um, the idea of manifest destiny, which is our first lesson topic for period five. So manifest destiny is going to be a major term you want to be aware of. It's kind of the idea that the U.S. should um, move to the West. The U.S. should obtain lands. Uh, the, the U.S. should control the lands from sea to shining sea and that it is um, the intention. Uh, it is the fate, the destiny of the U.S. to do so. So part of this is going to be um, that there's a lot of economic opportunities out there. There's going to be some attitudes of white superiority that play into this. Some religious groups will want to seek refuge in the territory. Um, and there's going to be some legislation that makes it more feasible to move to the West. Um, when the U.S. actually does migrate um, through especially things like the Mexican-American War, um, that's going to expand the U.S. borders, which will then lead to um, federal funding of transportation developments like the Transcontinental Railroad, the development of new economic opportunities as the U.S. controls California. There will be significantly more abilities to interact with Asia, especially through trade, and of course, more conflict as Mexicans and American Indians defend their land against U.S. encroachments. The Mexican-American War is going to be the culmination of 
one of the U.S. efforts of Manifest Destiny. Um, part of the reason for the Mexican-American War is going to be that the U.S. Um, Southerners would like to expand slavery into Texas. Um, and the election of Democrat James K. Polk, who is an expansionist, is also going to play a significant role in beginning this war with Mexico. The U.S. will win the war, and the major effect is going to be the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, where the Mexican session is given to the United States, and now the U.S. borders will be pretty much set in stone. Um, one more additional land purchase, the Gadsden Purchase, will happen in 1853. And so there will be a massive increase in the debates over slavery as a result because um, the Missouri Compromise will not apply to these new lands, and so it will be uh, it will have to be determined whether slavery can expand into these new lands or not. And then the question over the status and rights of Mexicans and American Indians who live in the area will also become a major um, question uh, for the federal government. So additionally, in this, uh, in this key concept all about migration is looking at international migration. And in the period, as you can see in the graph, there is a rapid and massive increase in the number of immigrants that were entering the United States. In this period, the three biggest groups will be Germans, Irish, and Chinese, who will often settle in ethnic communities. Um, and as a result of this rapid increase, we are going to see the rise of nativism, which is going to be an anti-immigrant and also anti-Catholic movement. Um, and they are going to seek to limit the power and influence of immigrants and will actually develop a political party known as the Know Nothing Party. So what do you have to know from Key Concept 5.1? Those questions you absolutely should be able to answer, but thinking about what was the U.S. expansionist foreign policy, how did that increase debates over the rights of individuals, and then what were the reasons for and impact of the rise of international migration? Moving on to Key Concept 5.2. Intensified by expansion and deepening regional divisions, debates over slavery and other economic, cultural, and political issues led the nation into civil war. So this concept is really looking at what are the events leading to the civil war. We're going to start by looking at the Compromise of 1850, which is going to be another attempt to resolve the issue of slavery. So as I already mentioned, when the Mexican-American War occurred, now there is the question of what to do with uh, the issue of slavery in these territories. Henry Clay is going to propose the Compromise of 1850, which would admit California as a free state, and it also would create a stricter fugitive slave law. And so that's kind of... Um, uh, it's help. It's agreeable to the North with admitting California as a free state, and it's agreeable to the South with having a fugitive slave law. And then kind of the big compromise piece to try to avoid future issues is going to be the use of popular sovereignty, where the people will actually decide in New Mexico and the Utah Territory. So those are the three big components of the compromise. But unlike the Missouri Compromise, this one will not resolve tensions for very long. We see regional differences being at the heart of the conflict. So the major economic differences, while the North is manufacturing and has free or paid labor, and the South relying on agriculture and slave labor, that's going to be uh, really the, the largest difference between the two regions that fuels this divide that leads to the Civil War. Uh, the free soil movement is going to portray the expansion of slavery as incompatible with free labor. And so the free soil movement is going to say that the territory gained from Mexico should have no slavery. But that's not necessarily an abolitionist perspective. It's the perspective that poor whites should have the opportunity to become successful in that area. And then we also have abolitionists who use a variety of arguments to advocate for the end of slavery. And then we see the increase in the defense of slavery and justifications for it um, in the period as well. So lots of publications, lots of speeches at the time uh, trying to uh, either end slavery or allow for it to continue and expand. 
Continuing on with our um, idea of tensions increasing before the Civil War, the Kansas-Nebraska Act is going to end the Missouri Compromise. Um, it is going to um, really ignore the Missouri Compromise and allow for popular sovereignty to exist as Kansas and Nebraska will eventually try to become states. There's going to be massive violence in the state of Kansas as that state has a very fraudulent election um, where both pro-slavery and anti-slavery advocates are going to claim victory. Additionally, increasing uh, tensions is going to be the Dred Scott decision, where the Supreme Court will determine that African Americans were not intended to be citizens and have no rights of citizenship. And this is where the, uh, the Missouri Compromise was officially declared un unconstitutional, which could have expanded slavery into um, some northern territories. We see the end of the second party system, where there's many new sectional parties developing. Uh, and slavery is going to be one of the major issues of many of these parties. So here you can see um, an example of what is happening with the extension of slavery from 1820 through 1854 and how this is going to be a major issue dividing especially the northern and southern states. Kind of the last straw that leads to the Civil War is going to be the election of Lincoln. So Lincoln was part of the New Republican Party, and their platform on slavery was that it could stay where it was, but it should not expand. However, the South will not believe that that is the actual um, philosophy of Lincoln. And so immediately after Lincoln's victory, uh, South Carolina will secede, followed by several other Southern states. And then after he is inaugurated, a few more will secede and form the Confederate States of America. So really, you need to be able to explain what led to the Civil War. Chronological order here is really important. You want to be able to understand how Americans in the North and the South responded to the issue of slavery, and then what are the specific events and developments that increased tensions. All right, our final key concept, the Union victory in the Civil War and the contested reconstruction of the South settled the issues of slavery and, and secession, but left unresolved many questions about the power of the federal government and citizenship rights. So starting off, what led to the Union victory? You need to be able to explain what actually caused the North to be successful. Battles are not super important here, but a couple key victories like Antietam could be helpful. Also, just some basic understanding like the initial advantages and disadvantages, the strategies of both sides, how people in the North and the South opposed the government, so how Northerners opposed the Civil War and how Southerners opposed the secession. That would be good information. And also the role of of African Americans in the war is also a concept that you should be familiar with. Government policies during the Civil War, the two big ones are the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed enslaved persons in the Confederacy. In theory, it, it technically did this. However, Southern states did not actually adhere to this. Um, but it did reframe the purpose of the war from being just reunited the no reuniting the North and the South to actually ending slavery. The Gettysburg Address is another really important um, government policy or government action um, where the Union was inspired to continue to fight. Other things to be familiar with would be conscription, the draft, and Lincoln's suspension of habeas corpus, which is um, a really important moment where Lincoln suspends um, certain First Amendment rights and is very controversial, similar to what happens in other wars in American history. Reconstruction. Huge topic here. The first topic is really um, just focused kind of on political reconstruction. We're looking at what are the things that the uh, federal government passed in order to change the definitions of citizenship and the rights of individuals. So you have to know the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. You should know who was part of government during this time. You should also be familiar with how this impacted the women's rights movement, where women were trying to obtain citizen um, suffrage rights with the 15th Amendment, but did not happen in the period. The next lesson is much more significant looking at the failure of Reconstruction. So this is where you will look at, despite the political achievements, did it actually change life in the South, especially? 
did the were those rights for African Americans temporarily um, successful or permanently? Um, and you want to look at social reconstruction. How did the lives of African Americans change? You want to look at economic reconstruction. Were they able to be self sufficient? And so, seeing these examples, you should be familiar with these things um, as evidence for how reconstruction failed. Also, understanding the contested election of 1877, where the Republican Hayes was actually elected but compromised to end military reconstruction, which basically ended um, the U.S., the federal government's involvement in the South in trying to protect the rights of African Americans. So must knows what contributed to the Union victory? How did Lincoln's leadership impact the Civil War? What did the government do to rebuild the nation? Why did it fail? And how does the Civil War impact views on American identity? So the very last lesson of the unit is a skill lesson focusing on comparison. And this one is really looking at how did the Civil War impact American values? So how did the ideas of um, the rights of individuals change? You want to think about um, did issues of individualism and states' rights change? Think about equality. All of those things are could be relevant uh, to this skill of comparison. Here's a list of the most important terms according to the College Board. So you may want to write these down or screenshot this. Uh, these are the ones that are going to be the most likely to show up on an AP exam or be able to be used as evidence in a essay. Key themes, really important to think about um, American and national identity. How did the environment and geography how was that involved in this time? Thinking about westward expansion, politics and power, focusing on those various political parties that develop and also the issue of secession and the role of the government in reconstruction. America in the world, things like the Mexican-American War, increased trade opportunities with other nations, thinking about the conflicts with American Indians. American and regional culture, thinking about the differences between the North and the South, and social structures, really thinking about the um, system of slavery here. How did that change in the period? So then finally, these are the learning objectives as listed by the College Board. I always encourage students as a study strategy to actually answer each of these. Explain the causes and effects of westward expansion. Don't just think it in your head. Write it down because this is exactly the type of thing the College Board uses to create their essay topics. So that was a lot. If you're still with me, thanks for joining. Um, I hope this was helpful for you in preparing for either a unit test or the end of the year exam. Um, and if so, please like and subscribe.